Hello, my name is Jim McKenzie, and I work for the Mariposa County Resource Conservation District. This video is George Gruel's historical examination of our wildfire crisis in the Sierra Nevada mountains. George E. Gruel published his book Fire in the Sierra Nevada Forests in 2001 after a distinguished career as a wildlife biologist and forest ecologist. The book shows and interprets 84 photo pairs distributed topographically over the entire Sierra Nevada. The photo pairs are separated in time by decades, sometimes by more than a century. The changes that occurred in each interim period are astounding, having resulted in a widespread buildup of flammable biomass. The voice you are hearing is mine, but the words and the images in this video are those of George Gruel. George kindly consented to work with us on this video, and our efforts spanned a number of weeks. I'm sure you will find this history and its analysis both interesting and informative. This historic photo shows forests in the Sierra that had an open, patchy structure with grass understories. They were maintained in this condition by the frequent low-intensity burning either initiated by native peoples or caused by lightning. This regime of low-intensity burning had a strong influence on the structure, composition, and ecological function of these fire-adapted ecosystems that had prevailed for thousands of years. Landscapes that developed before the Euro-American settlements typically consisted of large trees with open to moderately closed canopies. Aside from the large trees, these forests contained young, vigorous shrubs and herbaceous undergrowth, as well as small patches of young trees. Today, in the absence of light surface burning by the native peoples, the forest landscape has filled in with an unprecedented amount of biomass and dead foliage, largely the result of fire suppression policies enacted by the Forest Service after the Big Burn of 1910. Fire intolerant species have established themselves in the absence of fire, and park like meadows have all but disappeared. In this dense condition, insect epidemics, disease outbreaks, and severe wildfires have become much more common. As these Sierra Nevada photo pairs demonstrate, it is obvious that a century long change in biomass accumulations and massive fuel loadings explain today's wildfire challenge. The number of large, high intensity wildfires have increased significantly since Fire in Sierra Nevada Forests was published in 2001. Extensive droughts, as well as new homes in the wildland-urban interface, are implicated in the West's wildfire problem. Biomass buildup and overaccumulated fuels predispose our forests to dangerous wildfire. These conditions exceed efforts to control and suppress them unless firefighters get relief in weather or a break in fuels. Wildfire costs have climbed at alarming rates. From 2000 through 2018, there have been 217 wildfires costing over $20 million each in the 11 western states. These incidents have exceeded $9.7 billion in suppression costs alone. This doesn't include loss of human lives and property, damage to natural resources, impact to local economies, human health effects, and other wildfire-related costs. In the Sierra Nevada, three wildfires burned over 150,000 acres each, with the largest consuming 257,000 acres. Considering the massive fuel buildup and the escalating costs of fire suppression, a re-evaluation of our over-reliance on fire suppression is necessary. It is apparent that there is an urgent need for an expanded fuel reduction program that is scaled to the size of today's wildfire threat. Selected removal of trees and 100 years of fuel accumulation would not only mitigate the occurrence of high-intensity wildfire, but would enhance the value of natural resources. Wildlife habitat would become more productive. Late-season stream flows would increase and previously blocked scenic vistas would return. It's time we spend more on prevention, and this means fuel reduction. Returning forests to their formerly healthy state will cost less in the long run than pursuing our present inadequate course.